In this video, I'm going to show you how to mount your Fire Tablet to your wall. Hi, this is Justin from Simply Smart, where we make smart home technology as easy as one, two, three. So if you're interested in smart home technology, consider subscribing for more content like this. Also, if you're interested in building the ultimate smart home, check out the video description for the three steps to get started. And what we're gonna do in this video is we're going to install our Fire Tablet onto the wall, and we're gonna tap into this switch here for the power. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this recessed outlet, we're gonna mount that onto our wall, we're going to take a USB plug and mount that into the recessed outlet. And then we are going to take this mount here, put our fire tablet in it, and mount that to the recessed box. So let's get started. I got my mount on Motifs Etc. 3D prints over on Etsy, and I will leave a link in the video description. And if you use this code right here, SharpToolsJN09, you will get a 20% discount on your order. So they have all kinds of stuff here for Fire 7s, iPads, Samsung Galaxies, and you can see that average review is five stars and all these happy customers down here. So it's a really high quality mount, um, works really well and very clean um, once it's complete. So definitely check out Motifs Etc. 3D prints on Etsy before you buy your tablet mount. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is grab our stud finder and figure out where the studs are on the wall. So go over to the left first. Typically there is a stud on either the left or right side of your switch. So as you can see, it's over on our left side here. And if we go over to the right, we have a stud way over here. So what we need to be sure of is that we are in between the two studs because when we run our wire from the switch up to our recessed box, you have to have a clear path. So you have to know where your studs are to determine where you're going to put in your recessed box. So you also need to determine left and right where you want your box to be and the height. So I have mine at 58 inches, thinking probably maybe 56 would be better. Just look on your wall and see if you have like a thermostat or something like that um, nearby and kind of make it the same height as that. So once you determine your location, you need to make a hole. So I made a template, um, we're just with cardboard, so it's gonna be six inches by three and three eighths inches. So I can just put that on the wall and trace it. You wanna make sure that you do make that level when you trace it. So then you can take your recessed box and put it into that hole. We just need to cut that out first. So we're gonna take our razor blade cut over the pencil markings on the wall. And this does take some time, just be patient. Just go over and over your lines and eventually you'll get through. And when you get to the end, try and pull it out of the wall. Don't let it fall into the wall. It's not a big deal if it falls in, but it's much better to just pull it out. So that is the piece that we cut out. And now we can open up our switch. So just take off the switch plate cover. And we need to take our non-contact voltage tester and figure out where the power is coming in on the switch. So the switch is on, so you can see that there's power on the top and bottom screw. 
So now there is no power on the bottom, but there is power on the top. So there's definitely power on the top there. So right there is where the power comes in. We just need to remember that because that's important for wiring our plug. So I turned off the power now. So now when I test it, no power is in the box. Make sure that you test both of these switches in the box or all of the switches to be sure there's no power. So we are good. And now what we can do is pull out this switch and start the wiring process. So this is a three conductor wire. We have a black, a white, and a ground. And I'll leave everything that you need in the video description. So now what we need to do is run this three conductor wire up out of this box and into the hole above. So we just need to push it through it's a little bit difficult because there is a tooth that holds the wires in place in the box. You just gotta pull that out and then push the wire through. So once you got your wire out, you're gonna to wanna to have about six inches sticking out. So remember we have six inches on our template. You can use that to measure the wire. You want at least six, but more is fine too. Same thing at the bottom. Just cut off what you don't need. And now we need to strip the outer insulation of the wire. So just take a razor blade and very lightly just kind of get through that first layer and be sure not to nick any of the other wires. There is actually a special tool for this, but I didn't have it, so I just used the basic razor blade. And just pull that insulation back as far as you can and grab that paper and then go ahead and cut that off. So there's our three wires, our white, black, and ground. So once you cut that off, just slide it up and then you can push in that tooth to be sure that your wires stay put. The next thing we need to do is we need to dig out our neutral wires. Strip off all these wires first. And then we're going to take our white wire take off the wire nut and add our white wire to the other white wires. And replace the wire nut. Make sure it's good and tight. And then we're going to take our black wire and we're going to put it onto the screw where we determined there was power coming in when the switch was off. And we just need to tighten this screw down. And then we need to put our ground on the switch. So I actually made a loop and added it to the existing ground, but you could also um, just wrap it around your ground wire because it is bare. Now we just need to kind of push everything back in the box and reinstall the switch. Just make sure everything's pushed back in there. And since we're done down here, we can also install our switch plate cover as well. And now the bottom portion is complete. 
So now what we need to do is take our recess box and you see that black grommet there. Basically the wire will push in there, but it will not be able to be easily pulled back out. So we're gonna slide in our three conductor wire into the black grommet and pull it through into the box. And now we need to take our recessed outlet cover and put it over the top of here. And that's what's going to hold your recess box from falling into the wall. So it came with um, some white screws. We're just going to take these white screws and screw it into the hole underneath the other screws that are already there. So that screw that in good and tight on both sides. And now we can push this in. Just make sure that your wings are either up or down and they slide into the wall. And then we can tighten down our screws so as we tighten down that screw, what's going to happen is it's going to swing out and then it's going to come towards us and it's going to grab onto the drywall in the back. You want to make sure this is level as well. So get your level out and make sure that it's level and tighten down the other side. Once it's tight, just make sure it's level again. If it's not, just loosen your screws up and get it level. Now we're going to take our USB outlet and you can see that we have a couple different color screws. On the back you can see this says hot. The hot wire is going to be the black wire that is bringing the power in. So that's going to be our black and on the other side we have a silver screw and that's going to be our white. And on the top we have our ground. So we're going to go ahead and strip this wire here. Now, I didn't strip it quite far enough in the video, so when I went to push in the switch later in the video, it was much harder. Just try and strip it back all the way back to that black grommet. I know it's hard because you're in a recessed box, but it will be a lot easier to get the plug all the way into the box later. So strip it back as far as you can, and then we're just going to put in our wires into our plug. And don't forget your ground. And then once you get all of that in, we just need to screw this into the recessed box. Let's go ahead and test it before we go too much further. So I got my phone, I'm gonna plug it in, and you can see that my phone is charging and there is power coming to the outlet. So we go ahead and finish screwing in our outlet, and then we can put our outlet cover on, which came with the outlet. And there's like these very tiny little white screws that came with it. Just grab those and put those in on either side. All right, now we got to a point where we can put in our fire tablet frame. You can see it's two different pieces and it's got a little slot here for your power cord to run through and you can see there is four screws in all corners you want to directly mount it to the wall you also have a reset spot here to turn on and off your tablet without removing it from the frame overall a really great mount very clean and simple two pieces snap together so what we need to do is just take out the one tiny short screw on the one side and then screw it in with our back plate of our mount. And then once you get that one screwed in, just swing it down and unscrew the other side, swing it up, and then screw in the left side. Once you have both sides secured, you can see that you have these ledges all the way around and that's what's going to hold your fire tablet in. 
So just plug it in, slide it through, and put on the outer cover here, and make sure it's tight all the way around. And that's it. You have it all the way in. There is no wires, super clean look, matches our switch plate cover. And if you need to reset it, take a paper clip and just slide it into that little hole and you can turn it on or off. And there you go, turned it back on with a little paper clip. And this is what it finally looks like at the end. Super clean. And notice that the camera and the sensor is not covered up by the frame. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section, and I will see you in the next video.